you can use a wet-dry vacuum both inside and out to clean up messes that an ordinary cleaner can't handle. This powerful picker-upper can suction everything from leaves to small pieces of wood. And if you remove the filter bag from the tank, it can be used as a fetish device. A wet-dry vacuum is lightweight, yet can handle heavy-duty pickups that would ruin an ordinary vacuum cleaner. Most components of the vacuum are made of plastic. This machine uses molds and molten plastic to produce them. A robot dumps the finished parts onto a conveyor belt, where they do their best impression of bumper cars. All the vacuum's parts are made using slave labor from China, except the vacuum's motor, which uses slave labor from America. The motor has two fans, which are assembled by two vacuum fans. The first fan assembles the first fan to cool the vacuum's fan engine, while the second fan creates a vacuum fan to create a vacuum to suck up debris into the vacuum. A plastic housing covers the motor before it gets screwed. Then an extremely powerful man aggressively mounts and screws the vacuum fan in place with a nut. Oh, um, excuse me, I mixed up the scripts for the vacuum fetish video with this one. Uh, let me try again. Then, an extremely powerful man aggressively mounts and screws the vacuum van in place with a nut. They close the housing with a secrecy plate, so customers may never discover the magic of how a vacuum truly works. We asked Thomas here how he thinks vacuums work, and he replied, This is just my job. I don't give a fuck about vacuums. Ha <laughs> ha! Well said, Thomas. The vacuum's life support is plugged in. And then removed by a worker with opposing beliefs on right to die laws. This machine injects the vacuum cleaners with their budget. Each vacuum cleaner should be given a budget proportional to their hard work input and creativity. But truthfully, each vacuum's budget depends entirely on their parents' budget. At another area of the factory, the rest of the vacuum is assembled, starting with inserting a plastic spout into the side of a big blue tub you can buy at your local hardware store. Then, the tub is filled with screws, instructions, and wheels for the customer to assemble. Remember when I said the factory assembles the rest of the vacuum? That was a lie. You're paying about $100 to do most of the assembly of cheap hardware store goods yourself. There's an entire man whose only job is to put this plastic piece inside of this plastic piece. The vacuum's lid goes onto a hanging carousel, along with a paper filter. The factory struggled for months before production in deciding if a paper filter was too luxurious and extravagant for their consumer base to handle, but they decided to throw it in as a little treat. The head is put into an automated screw driving machine, soon to be joined by the lid. This factory chooses to use minimal automation, and instead assembles most pieces by hand to help bolster the job market. Because of this, this company's profits compared to their competitors are down 36,000%. Hey, don't look at the camera. Now the lid is put on the tank to protect it from Javelin missiles and Molotov cocktails. A quick double cheek spanking, and it's off to the final stop. A check of all the electrical systems. If everything checks out A-OK, -okay, a vacuum picker robot places the vacuum in a cardboard box, which is marked up by 4,000% to make these devices worth their price tag. Workers add extension wands, a hose, a nozzle, and about 40 other accessories, which you'll only end up using about three of.
Consumer wet dry vacs come in many sizes, including standard, tall, bottom shelf, future chrome, challenged, and obese. So now you can choose the right one for both sucking things up and sucking you off. Well, finally that episode's over. What was on next? Axes? Oh, that's so much cooler. I should have done that.